How's it going everyone, it is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be covering how to make your PC games perfectly smooth. Whether you're on a low end, high end, medium end, old or new PC, this video is going to be aiming to help you achieve the smoothest gameplay possible, reducing micro stuttering for incredibly smooth gameplay on all games in which you play. On screen now you can see a quick example of a typical frame graph for most games and you can see the frame time deviation is terrible. Here we have an example of a completely smooth frame time graph with all of the optimizations set up and which can be adjusted on a per game basis so you can fine tune everything for your individual game. Regardless of your setup, we'll be going through everything with inside of this. This video. As always, if you are happy with this video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. To start setting everything up, we first of all need to click on your desktop and open up inside of the control panel for your GPU. Starting off with NVIDIA users, you'll first of all need to navigate to the top left hand side to adjust image settings with preview. Inside of this tab, navigate down to use the advanced 3D image settings in the middle, select this option, then select apply. With that completed, head over to manage 3D settings in the top left. You'll need to make a decision as to whether or not you're going to be using G-Sync or not at this stage in the video as it's going to adjust some settings we're going to be setting up later on. And for a very brief overview as to what I'd recommend for you, I would only recommend using G-Sync if you are unable to achieve your monitor's maximum refresh rate at 90% of the time on games in which you play. If you're typically playing single player games and you like to have the graphic fidelity up high, and your frame rate typically fluctuates quite a lot and can often not hit your maximum monitor refresh rate at all times, G-Sync will typically be a better option for you. Using G-Sync does increase input latency ever so slightly, but will give you a much smoother experience. On the flip side of this, if you are a player that typically aims to max out their monitor's refresh rate at all times on games, I would definitely recommend not using G-Sync. This is especially true for those of you that play esports titles that have a lot of FPS, or even games such as Warzone, if you're typically getting your monitor's refresh rate or higher at most times when playing. If you don't want to enable G-Sync and you want to turn it off, make sure that all options have been unselected, then select apply. Head over to manage 3D settings on the left hand side. Inside of it, navigate down to your monitor technology. In the drop down menu, we'll have G-Sync. Select G-Sync or G-Sync compatible if you're going with G-Sync, or select fixed refresh if you're turning G-Sync off. Once that's selected, go to the bottom right, select apply. Next up, we're going to be installing MSI Afterburner, but we're not going to be installing this for any overclocking capabilities. We're installing this so we can monitor our in-game FPS, our frame time graph for stability, and we can also use this to see the resources in which we're drawing with inside of the game to make any adjustments to any in-game settings we may want to. Use the link in the description down below or do a quick Google search for MSI Afterburner, then select download Afterburner. Run the setup.exe. We're also going to check the option for Revertuner Statistics Server, as this is going to be the monitoring tool with going to be using. Make sure both are selected, then hit next. With the PC then restarted, head over and open up MSI Afterburner. Your default skin for Afterburner could look slightly different to this, just find the settings cog located anywhere within inside of here, then select your settings cog. Inside of here we then need to set up a few options so we can monitor a few settings within inside of our games. For this we first of all need to head over to on-screen display. You need to navigate to toggle on-screen display and set up a hotkey, doesn't matter what it is, just try and use a key that you don't typically use within inside of games, otherwise you could run into issues. So for me I like to use slash. Click in the box where it says none, then press the key, you'll have your hotkey then set up. Head over to the monitoring tab found up here in the top. You can select more options with inside of here, but the overlay is going to get larger and more messier, so we're only going to be focusing on the options you're going to need to set up with inside of here. First of all, find frame rate. Go to the left hand side of this, you'll see a grayed out tick. Click on the tick, then click on the option, then go down to show in on-screen display and ensure that this has been checked. Next up, find frame time. Navigate over to the left hand side, tick this box. Navigate down, select show in on-screen display once again, but for frame time we're going to go to the right hand side, go to the drop down menu and set this to text and graph. This is how we'll get the frame time graph later in the video. I also like to enable the GPU temperature, show in on-screen display, and GPU usage showing on screen display. And last but not least, we're going to navigate down until we find memory usage. This will be our GPU's VRAM usage. Select this box, select showing on screen display. And if you want to change the order of how any of these options appear with inside of the graph, just simply drag them to above or below the options in whatever order you want them to be in. Once you have those options then selected, go to the bottom right hand side, select apply. 
Minimize out of Afterburner, go to the bottom right to your task icon tray and you should see that Reva Tuner is running in the background. Double click on Reva Tuner, navigate down to Setup in the bottom. Inside of Setup, navigate down to Enable Frame Time History Overlay, select this option, then select Apply, then OK. We're also going to navigate down to Show Own Statistics and switch this to On. Navigate to the top left hand side and ensure that Show On Screen Display has also been switched to On and we're then good to go. We don't need to use the program just yet but we are going to leave this running in the background as we'll be making use of that program later on. Before we boot into any and all of our games, we first of all need to open up the Windows Task Manager to see how much VRAM we have on our GPU as this is important. Simply hit Control, Shift and Escape on your keyboard. Navigate to the Performance tab. On the left hand side, proceed to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Click on this option. Drag out the box further, scroll all the way down to the bottom where you will then be able to find Dedicated GPU Memory. Ignore Shared GPU Memory as this number is irrelevant. As you can see for me, I have 12 gigabytes available. Depending on what GPU you have, you'll more than likely have a different VRAM number than this. We just need to take a quick note as to what our GPU maximum VRAM is as we do want to stay under maximum GPU VRAM utilization in our game and we'll monitor that later on. So whether you have to quickly write this number down to remember it or just remember it in your head that's fine. To set this up I would recommend booting up a game in which you typically play. So for me I've booted into the Apex Legends firing range but again this works on any game. As you can see in the top left of my screen the Revituna statistics server overlay is enabled but you may have to press that hotkey in which you set up earlier to enable or disable this. As you can see on my screen it's absolutely tiny so if you do want to adjust how big or small the overlay is, you'll then have the option for on-screen display zoom. We can adjust this. Once you let go of the button, the overlay will then adjust accordingly. Again, if you want to reposition where the overlay is, you can do so with the X and Y axis options down here. If you want to adjust this to a different corner of the screen though, you can just click on any of the corners. Before we do anything, we first will want to monitor our VRAM usage and ensure that it is not close to being completely maxed out as you will run into performance issues and stuttering if the VRAM pool is completely maxed out. So if you do remember earlier on for me in my Windows Task Manager, I have 12 gigabytes available of VRAM or 12,000 megabytes. In the top right hand side with my current Apex Legends settings, you can see that I'm only using four gigabytes and that's perfect. But let's say if you had 12 gigabytes available and this number was something like 11,000, you'd want to go into your individual in-game settings for any game, scroll down and start turning down some of the options, especially textures. If you're using ultra textures and that's maxing out your VRAM, try using high textures. Same goes for shallow details. You don't have to go crazy with the settings, but just adjust some of the heavy settings, which are listed on the right hand side of the screen now, just by one or two and see how your VRAM usage comes down. This may also give you a significant FPS boost, which is always welcome and will lead to better performance. We can then jump in to capping our in-game FPS. Yes. There are a few ways in which we can do this. Using in-game FPS caps will lead to the lowest level of input latency, but this doesn't fix the inconsistent performance as you'll still have drastic frame time deviations as they are not stable frame cap. Personally, I would recommend using the alternative two options, which are either using Reva Tuner Statistic Server or RTSS, which we have open in the right hand side, or using your NVIDIA or AMD Radeon control panels to cap your FPS. First of all, and my primary recommendation for those of you watching would be to use RTSS, which we are already using on our system. This has a fantastic, easy to use and quickly customizable FPS cap in which you can set for all games on your PC or load individual titles in so you can set individual FPS caps per game automatically when you don't even have to think about it. We'll be going over the numbers you should be capping your FPS to later on in the video, but for a quick demonstration first of all how to set up a cap on Revituna, you can set a global or system wide FPS cap where it will cap the FPS for everything on your system, but I actually prefer to navigate down to the bottom left and select add. Find the in-game application for the game in which you wish to add, that's going to be r5apex.exe, as that's the main application for the game. Selecting this, selecting open. Once that's then been loaded into Reva, if I then go and click on the Apex profile, head over to the right hand side, any changes I now make whilst Apex is selected will be saved to Apex and Apex only. This means that I can also come down and add more games, making more profiles, and I can set different FPS caps for different games. Let's say that I want to cap GTA 5 to 60 frames per second, but I want 120 on Apex. Well, I would simply click on the Apex application, set Set that cap, go down to GTA, set the cap of 60. If you decide you don't want to use RTSS and you want to use the inbuilt NVIDIA control panel FPS cap, simply open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel, head over to manage 3D settings in the top left hand side. Again we can set a global FPS cap with inside of here, but for the best results possible out of every game in which you play, head over to program settings. If we then go ahead to the drop down menu, either select our game from this list or hit add, for me that's going to be Apex so I'll be adding selected program, we can then navigate down until we find max frame rate. Any changes we make with inside of this profile will only be applied to Apex, so you can then jump in and set different FPS caps for your games, we'll go to maximum frame rate, go to the drop down menu, 
turn the FPS cap to on, then you would then set your value with inside of here, which we'll be deciding in the next step of this video. To set an FPS cap using the AMD Radeon control panel, simply head inside of the control panel, head over to your individual game settings by clicking on the game you want to set the cap for, scroll down until you find the Radeon Chill option. Enable Radeon Chill, you then want to set your minimum and maximum FPS to the FPS cap which you're going to be setting to. So if you're going to be capping at 120 FPS, set the minimum to 120 and the maximum to 120, select enter, and next time you boot the game, this should then be capped. So now that we know how to implement an FPS cap, what are the best FPS cap values for the best performance possible on our system? Well this is really going to come down to what games in which you play. My recommendation would be to boot into one of your favourite games, for me that's going to be Apex. With me inside of the Apex firing range at 4K, you can see that my frame times are all over the place. This is relatively smooth performance and this is pretty optimised as is, but as you can see, we are constantly getting frame time deviation. If that number was completely solid, it would mean there will be completely even pacing between each frame delivered to my monitor and the PC equaling perfectly smooth performance. But my frame time milliseconds are all over the place. What I would do is I'd take a few minutes to play the game and keep an eye on what your typical FPS value is or your average FPS. In this scene here, you can see I'm getting 155 frames per second, but there is no point in me capping at 155 frames per second because I cannot maintain that FPS on the settings in which I'm playing. I'd be better off capping at about 125 frames per second. We're gonna lose a small amount of FPS from doing that, but it's going to keep our game incredibly consistent because the system can manage that FPS cap about 90 to 95% of the time. Setting an FPS cap which is too ambitious for your system to be able to maintain, you may as well not be setting an FPS cap at all because you won't see the benefits from this. I'm going to head into RTSS, head to Apex, go to the frame rate limit mode, head over to the right hand side and I'm going to input the value of 125 which I said about earlier. Once I've input that value, if you look at my frame time graph, it's instantly become incredibly smooth. We're constantly getting 8 milliseconds of frame latency, meaning extremely smooth and very consistent performance. Even though we've lost a slight amount of FPS, the smoothness and consistency is absolutely phenomenal. And I would say I'm able to achieve this about 90 to 95% of the time, which is what we're looking for. Now what happens if I tab out and change that FPS cap to 150? Well this is an example of setting a too ambitious FPS cap. As you can see, my frame time graph is currently going all over the place. It's still slightly better and more consistent performance than no FPS cap, but my system just cannot manage that FPS. So you have to be realistic with yourself. You either need to lower the FPS cap in which you're going to be setting, or lower your in-game settings to give you more FPS to allow you to cap to that higher number. And this is why it's recommended to set an FPS cap up on a per game basis so you can squeeze the maximum amount of performance as possible in all of your titles. So heading back with inside of here, capping my FPS to 120, and my performance has gone back to being incredibly consistent. But if you are able to achieve a much higher frame rate, that's absolutely fine. Let's see that you're going anywhere from 220 FPS down to about 180. Well, I would recommend capping at about 185 to 190 frames per second, or what performance you can typically get over. If you can consistently see over 190 frames per second most times whilst playing your game, then I would cap your FPS at 190. As you are able to achieve that performance 90 to 95 percent of the time meaning that only in those incredible hectic moments you may see a slight fps dip whilst maintaining incredibly smooth performance throughout 95 percent of the time playing your game and again, for those of you running on a G-Sync or FreeSync monitor, if your ideal FPS cap is below your monitor's maximum refresh rate, that's fantastic. It is still recommended to use a custom cap like this as it keeps you inside of the G-Sync or FreeSync range whilst maintaining the most stable performance possible and most stable frame times. Due to us setting an FPS cap and optimizing our frame pacing and increasing our PC's efficiency at rendering, because we have a fair amount of GPU overhead now available because we're capping our FPS at our average FPS, here is a quick example of two games. On the left hand side we have our stock GPU settings and on the right hand side we have the exact same settings and the same FPS cap but we were actually able to undervolt our GPU drastically reducing overall power draw from the wall, saving money on electricity, helping it maintain boost clocks running better and lasting longer and a healthy reduction in overall GPU temperature allowing us to maximize our FPS gains, smoothness with inside of our games and it's a win-win-win situation. When using a custom FPS cap with inside of any games that do support it in the settings menu if you do have the option for NVIDIA Reflex, ensure that you are using the option for on or enabled and not enabled or on plus boost. You don't want to be using the boost options when using an FPS cap as you could run into some inconsistencies and I've seen much better and more consistent performance using just enabled when capping your FPS.
FPS. Here we've moved over to Nickelodeon Kart Racers to demonstrate a title which has a hard FPS cap implemented with inside of it. This game is capped to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is, but even with the game being capped at this monitor's refresh rate, you can still see that the frame times are inconsistent, going from anywhere from 7.1 down to 6.5. This is still somewhat consistent performance, but if we zoom in on that frame time graph, you can still see all of those frame deviations, and that graph isn't 100% smooth. So even though the game is already capped at 144, if we quickly go over to Reva Tuner, or however you cap your FPS, find our game EXE, select this, select open, go back with inside of RTSS, go over to the right hand side, and I'm going to be setting my FPS cap to 144, because that's what the game is already capped to. But because I've overridden the game's implemented FPS cap, look how consistent my performance now is inside of the title, leading to 100% stable frame times. So even on games where there is a hard FPS limit with inside of the game engine itself, you can still cap your in-game FPS to match that cap, where you'll still get much better and way more consistent performance. Even if you're capping at 60 FPS on slower single player titles, that is still way better than not capping at all. And there you guys have it. That is how to make all of your PC games silky smooth with perfect frame pacing. If you are interested in more optimizations and getting the most out of your PC without having to spend a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.